Guten Tag and welcome to PA Dutch 101. This is video 25 in our series and covers the dative case in Pennsylvania Dutch. Uh, this is a grammar based video and it is important before watching this video for you to go back and view all of the videos leading up to this point, but more importantly the ones entitled the nominative case and the accusative case because the dative case builds on what we learned in those two videos. So, having said that, let's get going. So, and these are the video numbers that I just referenced. As we covered in video 12 in our series, the nominative case is the case that we use that identifies the subject of a sentence. And then later on in video number 17, we covered that the accusative case is used to identify the direct object of a sentence. Now, our brand new case, the dative case, is used to identify the indirect object of a sentence. Now again, if you are rusty on grammar terms, we'll explain what these are in this video. For example, take this sentence in English. Alice buys the friend a book. Okay. Now, we learned in the first video that Alice is the subject, that's your nominative case, the book it's what she's buying, that's the direct object, that takes the accusative case. Now in this sentence we introduce another noun, the friend. The friend in this sentence is the indirect object. So subject is what is doing the verb. Direct object is what is receiving the action of the verb. And normally we can say that the indirect object is receiving something from the direct object. Alice buys, what is she buying? She's buying a book. To whom or for whom is she buying it? The friend. Okay? Difference between subject, direct object, and indirect object. That same sentence in Pennsylvania Dutch, Die Alice kauft dem Freund en Buch. Notice that the word order is the same as English in this case. And we want to remember that in the normal situation without any weird things going on or any uh, wild cards being played. This is your normal sentence structure. Subject, verb, indirect object, direct object. Nominative case, verb, dative case, accusative case. Try and remember that or keep that in the back of your mind. Okay. As we covered in the other two videos, both the nominative and the accusative case have both definite articles and indefinite articles. Now the definite articles for the dative, remember the definite articles are the ways of saying the word the. In the dative case are, and these are different, these are new. In the masculine, it's dem. Dem. In the feminine, der. Der. In the neuter, m. M. And in the plural, de. De. Okay? Dem, der, em, de. Your definites. Your indefinites, which would be the words either a or an in front of a noun, in the dative case are in the masculine, m, m, in the feminine, r, r, in the neuter, m, m, and in the plural we don't have it because you can't have an indefinite article in the plural. Okay. Now, indefinite articles and possessive adjectives. As we covered in video 13, that was our video on possessive adjectives, words that show possession. These possessive adjectives take the same endings as those, the indefinite articles. In the video 13, we talked about how they take the endings both nominative and accusative are the same, so there's no real change. But in the dative, our indefinite articles are different. So our possessive adjectives are going to take the same endings as our gender-specific indefinite articles. We'll show you some examples. Here's an example. Ich schick mein gross daddy and brief. Ich schick mein gross daddy and brief. In video 13, we learned that the word my, M-E-I, is the possessive adjective for my, M-Y, in English. Now, why is there an M on the end of this? Because, in this sentence, gross daughty is your indirect object. It's who is receiving the letter, okay? 
That makes it dative case. So we have to go back to our indefinite articles, just a couple slides before, and find out gross dotties masculine. It's dative, of course, because it's the indirect object. So we add an M because in the indirect object, in the dative case, possessive adjectives, it's M. So we have to add that. That signifies that it's dative and also that it's the indirect object. If this was something feminine, this would be a different ending based on the chart that we had with indefinite articles. Here's one that is feminine. Der Bu schreibt deiner Mutter ein Postcard. Der Bu schreibt deiner Mutter ein Postcard. So the boy is writing your mother a postcard. Now in this case, mother is the indirect object, it's the dative case. It's feminine, of course. We learned that die is the possessive adjective for your. Now, why is there an re on the end? Because it's dative. And we had to take the r ending because that's what the rule tells us we have to do. All right? This, seems, this might seem a little tricky at first, but you will get used to it. If you know your endings, you just tack them on. You'll be okay, especially through practice. Now. In the accusative case and in the nominative case, we also learned that there's a list of personal pronouns. In the nominative, that was one of the first things we learned and covered. That was the ich, the do, the er, the yes, the mir, the dir, and the si. In the accusative case, we learned then there was mich, dich, ncs, uns, eich, si. Dative has its own list of personal pronouns, and here they are. In, and this is, I'm sorry, this is a typo. This should say dative. Please make note, this should say dative, not accusative. These are the dative personal pronouns. That's my mistake in making this. In the dative, the dative form of ich is mir. 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 The do form, dir. 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 The er form, im. 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 The Z form, R, R, R. The S form, M, M, M. The Mir form, Uns, Uns, Uns. The Dir form, Eich, Eich, Eich. And the Z form, Inne or Ine depending on where you are. Some people pronounce it inna, some people pronounce it ina. Now, notice that some of them are the same as the accusative, like the uns and the aich, those were the same as the accusative. Uh, the other ones are different from the accusative. Again, this should say dative, this should say dative. My apologies. Okay? Me, you, him, her, it, us, you guys, they. Alright? These are the dative forms. And they work just like the personal pronouns did in the nominative and the accusative. They take the place of a noun. If we think back to our sentence with der Großdaudi, uh, what was it? Ich schick, ich schick dem Großdaudi and postcard and brief. I'm sending my grandfather a postcard. If we were going to replace postcard with the word for him, it would be dative because Großdaudi in that sentence was the indirect object and it's masculine, air form, so it would be ihm. Ich schick ihm and brief for example. And they work exactly the same way, just a new list because they're dated. Okay. Also, just like in the accusative case video, we also learned that there are accusative prepositions. Prepositions that are specifically accusative all the time. Well, in the dative case, there are also prepositions, a list of 11 prepositions which are always dative. Okay. Whenever you see them, you have to think in your mind, dative. Okay. And the rule is exactly the same as the accusative prepositions. So, whenever you see one of these prepositions that are coming up in this list, the rule is that the noun associated with the preposition, and usually it is exact, directly after the preposition in a sentence, always takes the dative case. There are no exceptions to this rule. Nothing trumps a preposition. Prepositions, I always say to my students, are the king of the grammar world, or at least of the German grammar world. Because if it's dative, 
It's always dative, and nothing can tell that what to do. Same way with the accusative preposition. So when you learn these, know that nothing ever changes with these guys. Okay? Whatever noun is associated with it or comes right after it usually is dative. Here they are. And some of these we might have seen before, and I just didn't tell you that they were dative prepositions. The first one, aus, 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 which means out of. Now, you'll also quickly realize that a lot of these have more than one translation or more than one meaning. Don't get hung up on that. You'll, the more that you use them, you'll quickly realize when and which one to use. By means at the house of or at or by. <laughs> and the word is by. 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 This is a phrase, prepositional phrase, that, we, that takes the dative in Platz von means instead of. Again, in Platz von. In Platz von. In Platz von. Mit means with. It's an easy one. Mit. 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 Mit aus means without. Mit aus. Mit aus. Mit aus. Noch means to, toward, or after. Again, it depends on the situation. Noch. 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 Fun means from, of, or by. Fun. 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 Weich is on account of. Weich. Weich, weich, weia is also on account of. Again, it depends. Both are they're interchangeable. It, this is one of those that's regional. Some areas will say weich, some areas will say weia. Either one. Weia, weia, weia. And then the last two, sida means since. Sida, sida. Sidar and su means to, that should be an O, T O, at, and to, T O O. Su, su, su. Now, the best thing I can tell you, you notice that by means by and fun means by. The way to tell these apart, um, by and fun, if you're thinking like something is written by an author, thinking of it that way, then we're going to use fun. This by, think more like location. The school is located by the store or near the store. Then you're going to use by. That's the easiest way to keep those two separate. Uh, memorize this list, memorize their meanings, and the more Pennsylvania Dutch you start learning and working with, you'll see when which one gets used and you'll start to get used to its usage. Don't be scared by the fact that a lot of these have multiple meanings. Through practice and repetition you'll eventually realize which one to use when. Okay. Couple examples using these. Couple question sentences using these dative prepositions. Kommst du mit dein Refra? Kommst du mit dein Refra? Fra. We see mit. Mit's a dative preposition. It automatically makes what's behind it, in this case, your wife or your woman, dative. Hence the R-E ending. Deinere, feminine dative form of your, Frau. Kommst du mit deiner Frau? Zitter em your ruhn ich do. Zitter em your ruhn ich do. Here we're starting the sentence with a dative preposition. That doesn't matter. Sitter, dative preposition, since. That automatically makes what's behind it, in this case, the word your. Dative, hence the M. Sitter M your, wo nicht do. I have been living here since a year or for about a year. Okay. Here's another example. Ich kann mit aus meiner Schuhe net laufe. Ich kann mit aus meiner Schuhe net laufe. Mit aus, dative preposition, the word following it, shu. So we have to give the correct dative ending, mein ra, shu net lofa. I cannot run or walk without my shoes. Yeah? 
All right. Now, just as in the accusative prepositions, we learned that some of them in certain situations can contract and make a contraction. This also happens in the dative. So some dative prepositions and articles can be contracted as long as there is special emphasis on the article, a couple. And again, you don't have to do this, but you will hear speakers say it and you will see it in writing. So I just want to make you aware of it. If you're using by and whatever after it is masculine in the dative, you can contract it and make the word by him. By him. When you're using fun and you have something masculine after it, you can make the contraction fum. Fum. Fun. If you're using fun and whatever after it is neuter, you can make the contraction fumma. 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 If you're using tsu and the contraction is with something masculine, you can say tsum. 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 And if you're using tsu and whatever after it is, is neuter, you can make the contraction tsumma. 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 Again, you don't have to use these. You can perfectly write out or say by dame. But I'm letting you know that you will hear people say by him. First off, it's possible to do. Secondly, you'll hear people say it and you'll also see it written. So if you see that, don't be scared. Just know that it's a contraction of by plus dame. And that applies for all the other ones. Okay. Now, here's where Pennsylvania Dutch is unique in its use of dative. If you have studied German before, this is where Pennsylvania Dutch makes a little bit of a turn away from regular German or high German. We use the dative case, and that's why this is really important to learn, for showing possession, which is different from German. Okay, let's take the example in English, John's car is red. In English, we can show possession a lot of times with apostrophe S. John's car is red. John owns the car, shows possession. Now, in order for a Pennsylvania Dutch speaker to say this idea, John's car, we use the dative. Now look how we do it. This exact same sentence. Dem John sy machine is road. Dem John sy machine is road. Literally, the John, his car, is red. But notice how we do it. Whoever's doing the ownership, or whoever owns whatever we're talking about, is what takes the dative case. It's not der chon, it's dem chon. Dative. Dem chon sai machine is road. This takes getting used to at first. It's awkward because we wouldn't say this in English. And if that's your base language, that's what you're thinking in, you have to totally think about it differently. As you can see, the noun doing the possessing, in this case John, takes the dative case, which is followed by what is being owned. Why did I say sigh here? Because John's a man. It's his car. If this was a woman, let's say Becky, <laughs> der Becky ear machine. I would use ear instead of sai because Becky's a girl, it would be her car. Okay? We'll practice it, and this takes getting used to, but you can do it. Okay? The owned object uses either his or her, what I just got done talking about. Because no matter who is doing the owning, you know the gender. If it's a guy, it's going to be his. If it's a girl or a woman, it's going to be her. If it's something other than a human, then you have to go with the gender of the noun. For example, if it was the dog's toy, dog is masculine, so you would say sai. Okay? His. So that's something you have to think about. That's very different from English, but it you'll get it. You'll get it. Okay. Good business evening. Let's practice a little bit here. I have a couple sentences. And then on the blank, I want you to tell me what the correct form of whatever I have in parentheses is. Now, these are all dative because we're doing dative uh, video here. All right, so you can either pause the video, check your notes, and then come back and hit play, or just go with me and then go back and think about it. So uh, the first sentence I have, Der Dotty coughed the fra and siding. Der Dotty coughed the fra and siding. So you have to ask yourself, all right, what's the gender of Frau? It's a woman, so it's going to be 
feminine. So what is the dative feminine form of the? Check your answers or check your notes. Der Dottie kauft Refrau and Zeiding. Der Dottie kauft Refrau and Zeiding. Die Schwester gibt. Now here I want A, a form of A. Kind, which if you didn't know, child is neuter and tomat. So what is the dative form of neuter A? Check your notes. Die Schwester gibt me Kind. And tomat. Mekind and tomat. The sister is giving the a child a tomato. Frau Schneider geht mit. Now I want the dative form of him. Why is it dated? Because mit. There's a dative preposition. I call her. We want to say Mrs. Schneider is going with him. It's going shopping with him. Frau Schneider geht mit him. I call her. What is the dative form of him? Frau Schneider geht mit ihm, I call for. Frau Schneider geht mit ihm, I call for. Okay? And I think this is the last one. Tell me, die Karen wohnt noch bei them. I want the dative form of them. By, dative preposition, forces this to be dative. What would it be? Die Karen wohnt noch bei ihnen. Die Karen wohnt noch bei ihnen. Now you might say, that was a lot of information, and it was. The dative case is big. There's a lot of parts to it. Think about everything we covered. First off, we talked about what the dative case is used for in a sentence, an indirect object. We also mentioned that there are a list of direct or definite articles. There's a list of indefinite articles. There are prepositions. There are personal pronouns. And on top of all that, we use the dative case to show possession in Pennsylvania Dutch. So this is a big topic and it's a very important topic. So you might want to rewatch this video once or twice just to make sure you caught everything. You need to know how the dative case works moving on because it's used a lot, as you can tell. Memorize those prepositions, get those charts memorized with the correct definite and indefinite articles, and then start practicing. Start creating sentences of your own, building your vocabulary. Okay. Make sure that your sentence has all the parts that you need. Come up with sentence of people buying things for other people, people sending things to other people, because then you automatically got that indirect object. Bob is sending his wife flowers. Okay. There's a good sentence to start practice translating and working with because it has all the parts that you need. It also helps you review accusative case and uh, nominative case. Also, start building sentences with those dative prepositions. All right. So I guess my point is here, this is one that's going to take you some practicing to get used to because there's so much going on. But at the same time, don't be frightened by the dative case. It's not impossible. It just takes practice and, and memorization. Okay. So that was the dative case in Pennsylvania Dutch in a relatively quick nutshell. Um, that's it for today. Bis die next video. Max gut und schwätz Deutsch.